Hey, what's up, you guys? Great to have you back on the show. I'm Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. If you are a fan of a specific player, of course, you wish him all the best during his career and, of course, also at the end of his career. And at the end of a career can be a special time. We've, I mean, we've just experienced that with Dwayne Wade and Kobe Bryant and, of course, Dirk Nowitzki. But, of course, there's also the other side. When a player doesn't leave on his own terms and the ending just leaves you with a bad taste in your mouth. So in this video, I want to take a look at some NBA players that just had a sad and unfortunate career ending. But before we start with this video, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also, you can find me now on Patreon if you want to support my channel and also want to get more interviews of former NBA legends and also get more videos, don't forget to check out my Patreon account. All right, let's start. So the first player I want to start with is Sean the Rainman Kemp. If you are a fan of the 1990s, then of course you know that Sean Kemp was probably one of the most exciting players we have ever seen. I mean the incredible dunks, the alley oops, the sensational shot blocking ability. That guy was just amazing to watch. He and Gary Payton were the face of the 1990 Seattle Supersonics. In the 1996 season, the Seattle Supersonics challenged the 72-10 Chicago Bulls in the NBA Finals and Sean Kemp really put up a good fight. That was also the best season that he had in his entire career. He averaged 19.6 points, 11.4 rebounds and 1.6 blocks per game. After that, he joined the Cleveland Cavaliers where he also had three great seasons and he was one of the best power forwards in the Eastern Conference. But after that, I think you can really pinpoint his downfall because once the NBA was in the lockout, everything went downhill. Sean Kemp didn't practice anymore, he ate way too much, his off-the-court demons took over and that guy came back so badly in shape that literally no team was taking him serious. He played for the Portland Trailblazers and the Orlando Magic and at the age of 33, no team was willing to sign Sean on Kemp. Hey, listen, I, I'm going to come out of retirement for NBA team size Sean Kemp. He ain't got no chance. I like Sean Kemp. He's a nice kid, but come on, man. I listen, like you, let me just tell you something. And I, like I say, I'm going to clarify, I really like Sean Kemp. But if you're bringing Thank Sean you so much, you're crying. You're laughing so hard. No, man, but listen, if you're bringing in Sean Kemp, <laughs> your team must really suck. <laughs> No, seriously, if you're a general manager, seriously, am I right? If you're a general manager and you say, I can bring, Sean Kemp can make us better, you, <laughs> Next, we got A.I. Allen Iverson. Hardly any player had such a huge impact in the NBA like Allen Iverson. To many people, he's the pound for pound best player in NBA history. And when Allen Iverson arrived, his game, his style inspired an entire generation. He took the bad 76ers to the NBA Finals and is simply put a true NBA legend. But of course, Allen's career also had his ups and downs and his controversies. The legendary practice, press conference, his fights with his coaches and and so on. At one point, it got so bad that literally no team was willing to sign Allen Iverson, which is why the later part of his career really didn't look too good. In 2009, his short stint with the Memphis Grizzlies only lasted three games because he refused to come off the bench, and then he just played 25 games for the 76ers where he returned. Before, as I mentioned earlier, no team was willing to sign him. And for such an incredible basketball talent, it's just so sad that his career ended that way. Allen Iverson made more than $154 million in his career. Uh, a jewelry store just got a court's permission to garnish his bank account for $400,000 in unpaid bills for jewelry. What do you know of Allen Iverson's life these days? Um, you hear a lot of things, and, you know, Allen Iverson and I have a history. Obviously, some of it not very, very good. I love the guy personally. I'd like to see him back in the NBA. I hope that teams would ultimately give him a chance because I know he's starving to get back in the really? NBA. Really? No doubt. And, and, and one of the things that he's struggling with right now now is a lot of teams not looking at him. Next on the list, I got Dominique, the human highlight film, Wilkins. Not only one of the most underrated players in NBA history, but also one of the best scorers the game had ever seen. That guy was simply amazing. When he came back from his Achilles injury, that guy was putting up 30 points a game at the young age of 34, which is incredible. So in his mid-30s, Dominique played in Europe for two years and joined the San Antonio Spurs when David Robinson was injured in the mid-90s and was the best scorer on the team at the young age of 30. 
already 7. So it was unfortunate that when he joined the Orlando Magic, thinking that he would still be a vital part of the team, that he was not receiving any minutes and was only supposed to provide the veteran role, even though that guy was still productive. For me, it was an Orlando as well. Following a pattern. This made me want to choke him. It was, I wouldn't want to quit. But it was in Orlando at the end of my career. As I was leading the league in points per minute as a starter, even playing 18 points a game as a starter. I remember Chuck Daly blesses, so I love Chuck Daly. And he came to me and said, Nick, you know, we think we're going to start Matt Harvey because we need more scoring. I was like, huh? I said, Chuck, I'm leading the league in points per minute. You need more scoring. I said, Chuck, you know, I've been in the league a long time. And so I can, I can I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big man, I'm a big boy, so you can tell me if you want to start this kid, it's okay, I have no problem, but don't insult my intelligence. It was that moment I said, you know what, it's time to quit. It's time what was it Orlando for me too? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it, was, it was, at that point, the game started to change a little bit. It was more about pacifying, taking care of these young kids more than winning. And I didn't want any part of that. I honestly gotta say I really felt bad for Dominic Wilkins. I always used to be a fan of the older guys. If they could still perform on a high level when they were in their late 30s, I was always rooting for them. And when Dominic was sitting on the bench, even though he was still good, it really broke my heart. Next I got Dennis the Worm Rotman. As we all know, Dennis Rotman had not your everyday career. I mean, that guy was a second round pick, playing for the Bad Boy Pistons, becoming one of the best defenders, one of the best rebounds in NBA history, becoming a two-time All-Star, becoming a pop phenomenon in the mid-90s with the Chicago Bulls. So of course you expect that that guy has a great career ending. But after the Chicago Bulls run, in 1998-1999, he became a part of the Los Angeles Lakers, but only for 23 games before being released and it got worse in the 1999 season he joined the Dallas Mavericks alongside Michael Finlay and Dirk Nowitzki where he only played 12 games before being released again the crazy part was that guy was still averaging 14 rebounds a game at the age of 38 but at the end it looked like Mark Cuban just wanted to fill up the seats in the arena and wasn't really interested in having Dennis Rodman on the team so that was the last time Dennis Rodman was seen in the NBA which is very unfortunate Next I got Karl Malone aka The Mailman. If you appreciate good and smart basketball then you have to appreciate Karl Malone. One of the best players in NBA history and a true face of the Utah Jazz franchise. So when he joined the Los Angeles Lakers in 2003 I didn't mind even though he was joining Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal and Gary Payton and to me as a fan it looked like, like a short championship team I still didn't mind because I wanted him to win his championship. But everything went totally wrong. Even though the team had so many superstars there was no team chemistry. Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant didn't get along, so basically Karl Malone was the heart and soul of the team. And he was actually carrying the team even though he was now 40 years old. And even though the team didn't have the chemistry, the talent was still good enough to make it to the finals. But when Karl Malone went down with an injury, everything broke down. The Los Angeles Lakers got defeated by the underdog Detroit Pistons. So when the season was over, Karl Malone had to make a decision. But his experience in his last season was so bad that he actually didn't want to come back. Phoenix showing some zone. Oh. Up to the floor. He and Scott. Oh, Carl Malone immediately holding his right knee. And when the mailman holds an, uh, any type of an injury, you know he's hurt because you talk about one tough customer, Carl Malone. Last on my list, Latrell Sprewell, one of the most explosive guys I've ever seen in my entire life. That guy was so much fun to watch. If you love Russell Westbrook, that guy was Russell Westbrook of the 1990s. He had the potential to be such a great and sensational player, but he literally just messed so many things up that it's just incredibly sad how everything turned out. At the end of his career, at the age of 32, he had the chance to sign a decent contract with the Minnesota Timberwolves, which he refused saying that he has to feed his family so apparently tons of millions is not enough and that was the end of Latrell's NBA career
The Travis Sprewell was a different case. I mean, honestly, I was a huge Latrell Sprewell fan, but I couldn't get it. I really didn't understand why he decided that because that move actually ruined his career. And I mean, that guy really got forgotten. I mean, the hardcore fans still remember him, but that guy was such a unique and special player that he really deserved a better career ending and he basically messed it up for himself. So a very sad and unsatisfying career ending. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my Patreon account and also subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you next time. Peace. I'm out. Hey, you guys, if you're active on Facebook, I can really recommend Open Court. As an NBA fan, you should find everything you need. If it's funny NBA videos, impressive highlights, or even NBA news, I check out Open Court every day.